This is the To Health With That, Naturally Healthy in No Time podcast for big health topics taken in small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor Amy Nuzel, and this is season one, all about the MTHFR mutation. This week, we're going to talk about overmethylation. As you know, I approach MTHFR in um, maybe a little bit different way than some other people out there because I feel like there are basic state groups and those are less about the particular mutation you have and more about the way your body expresses symptoms. And so one of those states is overmethylation and the other is undermethylation. And we're going to talk about overmethylation today. According to the research of Dr. Carl Pfeiffer in his book, Nutrition and Mental Illness, overmethylation isn't really about an MTHFR mutation. It's actually a state that can happen due to any number of factors, but MTHFR certainly plays into that. And it's a less common state, perhaps, than undermethylation. Overmethylation is a tendency based on your genes, which, you know, MTHFR is a part of, your lifestyle, your stressors, your diet, and your environment. Interestingly, you can be an overmethylator without having an MTHFR mutation at all. Overmethylation also flows on a spectrum from very mild symptoms to far more severe ones. If you're not sure what whether you're overmethylator or undermethylator or methylation neutral, uh, I it did an earlier post with a whole comparative chart that you can go through like a worksheet. But as with everything else, even the most severely overmethylated person person will have some traits that are more typical for an undermethylator, and they'll have some traits and not others. This is all very individual. The biggest constants are artistic or creative tendencies, empathy and or social activism, and anxiety. I feel like overmethylators, when they're well balanced, can change the world with their compassion, their empathy, and their creativity. They're blessed with many positive traits. They're creative, highly artistic or musical, very empathic and sensitive. They definitely march to the beat of their own drum. They're passionate and self-sacrificing and tend to have a high pain threshold. But some of those traits can have a darker side, right? You can see an obsessive or manic focus on what's important to them. Social causes, activism, artistic projects, whatever it is. They tend to ruminate. It's hard to shut the brain off. Sleep disorders, anxiety, and a tendency towards self-enhancement. Um, which at a low level is fine, but can turn into things like extreme plastic surgery, implants of all types, tattoos, and piercings to a high degree. It can also lead to physical and medical issues. So food and chemical sensitivities are very, very common in this group. This picture is dominated by a low histamine, which translates to alternative immune pathway sensitivities like food and chemical, rather than a conventional allergy. Pain, head, neck, and general body pain... Uh, low histamine and the problems that go with that, and we will definitely talk about that at great length later on. Uh, anxiety or panic, sleep disorders, especially with physical or mental restlessness, depression, especially with an anxiety component, and hyperactivity or ADHD, in combo again with the restlessness and anxiety. At the extreme end of the pathology, they can be prone to things like schizophrenia, panic attacks, self-mutilation or self-harm, major depression, bipolar, and psychosis, including postpartum psychosis. There are also some nutritional tendencies for overmethylators. Typically, overmethylators tend to be lower in B vitamins generally, but especially folate and B12, and typically do better with higher than average doses of those things. We often have high copper levels, which can be balanced by increasing zinc, often very low histamine, low B3 and 6, and often intolerant to estrogen therapies, including birth control and hormone replacement therapy. Serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine may be elevated. This represents what's typical for the group, but drug and nutrient interactions can be very personal, so this is a general guideline and not a certainty. Typically, overmethylators have good reactions to drugs in the category of benzodiazepines, to lithium, which can be prescription or over-the-counter lithium or rotate, to high folate foods, to higher doses of folate, folinic acid, and 5-LMTHF, to B12, 
to B3 and B6, zinc, antioxidants, C, A, E, N, A, C, etc., manganese, magnesium, choline, D, M, A, E, and omega-3 fatty acids. Typically, we don't react so well to SSRI antidepressants, to antihistamines, because our histamine levels tend to be low anyway, to estrogen, whether that's birth control pills or hormone replacement therapy, to SAMe, methionine, copper, tryptophan, phenylalanine, St. John's wort, tyrosine, DMG or TMG, which are methyl donors, or inositol. Next week, we'll talk about the corollary, which is undermethylators, and I really hope you're going to join me for the beta group of the MTHFR 101 course. Starting in April, join me, Dr. Amy, for this once-only beta test group of my 10-week MTHFR 101 course. We'll have weekly Zoom talks, Q&A sessions, and you'll get lots of resources to get your MTHFR journey started right. Shoot me an email, amy at tohealthwiththat.com. See you there. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.